Hi, this is Jack Westman for ESEANews.com, still here in Jönköping, Sweden, for DreamHack Winter 2012. Joining me this time, once again, is Team Dynamic, uh, Adren and Pex. Uh, guys, you've just been knocked out of the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Tournament by Very Games. Uh, so let's talk about that, as painful as it may be. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to put you through this. <laughs> um, let's start with the first map on Inferno, which you lost 16-6. Uh, got off to a pretty rough start. Uh, what went wrong in that game? What could you have changed up? Um, we actually started off decent. We won the first gun round, it was 3-3. Three, three. And then after that, it seemed like we just couldn't put anything together. I think very games are very unpredictable, and we've always been bad against that. Like, we've been knocked out by them a lot. They like to just do random stuff, and even though it might be dumb, they do it together as a team so they can always trade kill. So uh, we just couldn't get a footing again. And we won the CT pistol, and then we lost an eco, and that was really what killed us. So, I mean, we could have won that match too. And let's not even talk about my lag out. No, well. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, okay, so the first map uh, kind of went to very games. Uh, train, you got off to a better start on train, despite the technical issues. 9-6, uh, six, sorry, 6-9. Six, uh, uh, very games won nine rounds, you won six in the first half on T side. So, obviously that's a bit better, that's a good start on train. Um, then CT side, it just seemed like you couldn't really lock it down, they were kind of picking you guys apart. Again, can you kind of talk us through the game? I'll come to you, Pex, with this question um, and what you could have changed up. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, we started, we got the pistol. We didn't get the pistol on T side, but we got the pistol on CT side. And I mean, after that, we got ecoed once again. That fucked us up. Sorry for the bad word. And um, I mean, we were doing, I think we were doing like good setups, maybe not trading kills enough I think that's what is like a bad thing because we were stacking the right stuff we I was playing alone inside they were not even coming to me and they had four outside and they were still able to overtake us Eric has probably something to say uh, th what we did wrong on CT side we let them execute their strat they played like one ladder two team mid and two ivy and it took it really slow and we kind of let them just execute right out the good old time we didn't really try to push them and stop their execute and we never actually played close on team mid, which I think really screwed us. They just kept sandwiching us. If we played bomb train or hell, the, the IV and mid guys would just sandwich us. So that, that's really was our problem on CT side. And on T side, let's talk about the lag out. It was, I think, 7-3. And we were in a 1v2, and we had the two people up. And Kiko lagged out in spawn. And we lost that round, and we lost that gun round. And that just turned into like a really bad momentum switch for us. And... The same thing happened on Inferno, but Inferno, I, I say they fairly beat us, I mean, but the uh, lag out on train definitely hurt us, and I think we could have won if that didn't happen. Right, okay. Do you want to answer that? Actually, on that lag out, it was a crucial gun round. I, w I was with Kiko, and, but he was lagged out, and I was alone. I didn't have bomb. I guess I could have killed him, planned the bomb or something, but just some kind of really shitty situations when you're under pressure doing those big tournaments. And if we would have won that round, pretty sure they got to eco and stuff. There's... Big round changer in close matches like that. But. Yeah, okay. Well, just while we're on the subject of the uh, technical issues then, uh, for the people that weren't watching or couldn't really, didn't really know what was going on because uh, they were just watching the stream, uh, what was the problem? I mean, you had, was it the PC crashing out, the game crashing out? What's both of it, yeah. Um, do you feel like it would have, well, obviously it would have made a difference. Uh, I don't know, I, I, was the, the admin, were the admins particularly helpful? Like. I mean, they're helpful, but I'm pretty sure there's a match medic inside of CSGO yeah, now. I right. thought I saw that update. Yeah. Like, Did you get it's the in the game. After we got the money back, but yeah. you lose everything. You lose yeah, the right. gun you had, the armor you had, the nades you had. And on the time I lagged out, I came back too late into the round. And I lost my gun, my armor, and all my nades that I saved because I saved the previous round. And I came in too late. I came in past the 15 seconds. Yeah. So I couldn't even buy that round. Yeah. So yeah. that's actually funny because I couldn't buy either. Because uh, yeah. I was like, Eric was like down, and I was like, yeah, I, w I didn't buy. We were looking around, and I pause, pause, whatever. And then I tried to buy it, and I had USP on the last gun run. <laughs> yeah, sure. Nightmare, right? Um, anyway, just jumping back really quickly to uh, something. We need a match medic like ESCA. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll get to that. Actually, that's a later question as well. Um, uh, 
sorry, I lost it. So going back to what you were saying earlier about uh, very games are getting a lot of trade kills, right? Um, do you feel like your aim was on par, but your teamwork not so much? Because, I mean, t you mentioned very games were going around as a team, kind of catching you guys out two versus one situations uh, and trading on you guys all the time. Um, was, was the teamwork the issue or was, you know, was aim a factor as well? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, I don't know, sometimes I think we weren't focused and we were making a lot of individual mistakes. Like one round, uh, there was just miscommunication. Uh, AZK took the bomb up arch after I got the pick and yeah. th then he lost the bomb even though it was a fallback to B strat. Yeah. And, but that's like probably the only mistake AZK did actually, but yeah. <laughs> sorry to call him out on that. Some people were saying he was playing well. Yeah, he played extremely well and definitely the best player for us. But there was just some miscommunication. I mean, we're, there's some gaps in the communication and we're not making moves together as a team and our shots were, I don't know, okay, I guess. Right, sure. Anything to, yeah. yeah, I need to step up my game for my team. Yeah, well, uh, how, well, no, I mean, that is, that is a comment that's been going around as well, just to pick you, not to, not to bully or anything. Um, but, I mean, is that weighing you down? Are you feeling that? Is your confidence hit or is, is it just something you have to play through how can how can you improve on that i don't know it's just uh, we've been playing for so long and uh, i don't want to be cocky but i've always been like an amazing player and uh, just since the last land i don't know it's i think it's my style everybody knows i have a different style and yeah and in csgo it's not working as well but i know i know what i have to do to fix this i really have to slow down my sense because at esca land I, uh, you, I think people know I had like a broken PC versus DTA the first match and I was playing with a sense that was like so slow but actually dropped a 20 on T side with like a really slow sense that I never played with. So with my style, just to, I think my issue is right now I can't lock on people properly so I'm sure if I just slow down my sense I'm gonna, I'll be able to uh, frag enough again. Just like a shitty feeling because past Sierra at ESWC and Source I did really good for my team and now I feel like I, put, I gotta put up some numbers. Um, right, and uh, just going back to, you mentioned ESCA LAN. Uh, ESCA Season 13 is a global league, so we've got 12 European teams competing. The top four are going to fly, presumably, to Dallas uh, to play against the top four North American teams, hopefully. <laughs> um, I mean, how much of a difference is it going to make playing on home turf for you guys? Because for the last three years or so, you came to DS Rack over here, you came to ESWC, now you're at DreamHack. Surely, you know, jet lag is always a factor. The travel, 36 hours of travel, you mess the hotel up. <laughs> uh, all that kind of stuff. What kind of difference is it going to make playing back in the States and having these teams come to you uh, and playing them on home soil? Uh, maybe just the jet lag. I mean, yeah. the traveling time, it just really, like, pisses you off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that. <laughs> like yesterday, I mean, it's always hard to travel with a jet lag. Yesterday, they were all sleeping at 8. And I was like, guys, let's watch some VG demos. We never counter anyone. Let's do it now. These guys, they all sleep because they're too jet lag and their body's just going off, you know? So it's just some stuff like, I don't know, even the food uh, and everything, sometimes it's harder to digest and digest whatever you say in English. But uh, yeah, but it's just a lot of factors. And I don't know, man, it's just, I feel like we're going to have a little advantage, like if we're playing from home, because it's, in the end, it's all those little things that can make the difference. The sleep, what you eat, and what's around you. And like you see uh, NIP, they got four managers behind them. Like it's fucking, like, you know, salaries. Salaries would help a lot. I'm sure if we had salary, Eric will watch some demos and, you know. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's just a lot of little things that in the end gives a lot of advantage, advantage. And we're really looking towards that next land for them. For the first time in 12 years, we're going to play like Euros uh, on uh, Homeland. So yeah. that would be really nice. Sure. Um, right. Lastly, almost lastly, but not least, um, who are your favorites to win this tournament now? Uh, boring question. NIP. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they're going to win it. Taking them pretty close. Yeah, but I, I think they're slipping now. Right. And yeah. I don't think VG is going to be that strong. No. I mean, so I think NIP will just win it out. Okay. In that case, let me revise the question and not ask boring questions. Um, how long can Nip keep winning for? I don't know. Someone's got to be able to challenge them because I think it's just going to be kind of boring for the yeah. viewers, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how long. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I'll let you guys uh, get back to 
whatever you're doing before, watching Nip, right? Um, shout, last but not least, sorry, shout outs. Shout outs to Plantronics GameCon, BenQ and Razor, Team Dynamic, Johnny5, The Bows. Shout out also to Sabrina from Team Immunity for good support. And thanks to everyone that are coming, I mean, families, community. So, any shout outs, bro? My mom. His mom, my mom too, Jack's mom. So. Dad? <laughs> Dad too, hi. Yeah. hi. <laughs> uh, right, guys, thank you very much. Pleasure as always. Uh, hopefully, I'll catch you over in Europe again very soon. Um, but otherwise, stay tuned to ESANews.com for uh, full coverage of the final day of DreamHack Winter 2012. Thanks.